All right, guys, today we're looking at lesson 7.3, task one. Graph square root functions. All right, graph the parent square root function. Recall that the parent square root function, g of x, equals square root of x, is the inverse function of the parent quadratic function, f of x, equals x squared, when the domain is restricted to all x is greater than or equal to zero. The parent square root function is also only defined for real values greater than or equal to zero. The table of values represent the parent square root function g of x equals square root of x. All right, so you can see that they've only chose values greater than or equal to zero. All right, since we're talking about a square root function, you can see that they've strategically picked perfect squares because the square root of four is two, the square root of nine is three, when you look at graphing these, it just makes the points easier to graph. All right, it says you can use the ordered pairs from the table to sketch the graph of g of x. All right, so if you look each one of these, um, so x and g of x, remember g of x is just the same thing as y, so this is your x and your y, so your ordered pairs. So you can look and see how these numbers have been graphed as ordered pairs, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3, 16, 4, these are coming straight from the table here. 25, 5, 36, 6, etc. So this is a sketch of the square root function. All right, so it says summarize the characteristics of the graph of the parent square root function. All right, it says what are the domain and range of the parent square root function? All right, so you can see the domain starts at zero and it extends with an arrow positively. So it's going to be, the domain is going to be all x's greater than or equal to zero. All right, the range is your y values, and the range also goes from zero and up. So it's going to be all y values greater than or equal to zero. All right, it says, what are the x and y intercept of the parent square root function? All right, so you can tell by looking at the graph, it intersects at zero, zero. So this would be your x and your y intercepts. All right, it says, where is the function increasing or decreasing, positive or negative? All right, so looking at the function again, you can see that from left to right, it is increasing. And it's above zero for this entire time. So it is also positive on that interval. So it says the function is always increasing, and the function is positive for everything greater than, for all x is greater than zero. All right, does the parent square root function have a maximum or minimum? All right, so you can see that it extends in this direction with an arrow, so there would be no maximum value. But if you come down here, this would be your minimum value. So the minimum value would be at zero. So it has a minimum value at zero. All right, describe the end behavior of the function. So on the left side, it just stops at zero, zero, but it goes in the positive x direction without bound. So you can say that the x's increase without bound as the y's or the y's increase without bound as the x's increase without bound. All right, describe the average rate of change for the function over equal intervals as x increases. All right, so the average rate of change is always positive. You can see that it's going up here. So the average rate of change, if you do this, like y minus y over x minus x, you can see that that is positive. But you can see how it starts out as a high average rate of change, and then as it goes, it gets a little bit less, like the average rate of change is decreasing. Like it's not um, gaining momentum, it's kind of leveling out. So the average rate of change is always positive, but it is decreasing as x increases without bound. That doesn't mean it's going down, it just means the average rate of change, the average rate of change from here to here is not as great as the average rate of change is from here to here. 
All right, so that is all for task one. If you have any questions, let me know. Continuing with lesson 7.3, task two, graph square root functions. Transformations of the parent square root function. Recall that transformations of parent functions include vertical and horizontal translations, vertical and horizontal stretches or compressions, and reflections across the x or y axis. The specific transformations can be determined by identifying the parameters a, B, H, and K when a square root function is written in either of these forms. All right, so G of X equals A times the square root of X minus H plus K, or G of X equals the square root of 1 over B times X minus H plus K. The parent square root function F of X equals the square root of X is shown in each of the following figures. All right, so you can see that a horizontal translation, H is underneath the radical sign, and it's going to shift you opposite of what you think, opposite the sign, basically. So you can see that F of X is in black, and if you have plus H, it shifts you to the left. If you have minus H, it shifts you to the right. So this is your positive x's, but under here it's going to be negative. And this is your negative x's, but underneath here you're going to have positive. So I'll just remember it's kind of like with the quadratics. If it's inside the parentheses, it shifts you opposite the sign. If it's under the radical, it also shifts you opposite the sign, left or right. All right, the vertical translations, this number is outside the radical, and it shifts you the way you expect it to. So... Um, if it's plus K, it shifts you up. If it's minus K, it shifts you down. All right, if it's got a square root of a negative X, if the negative is underneath the square root, it's a reflection across the Y axis. If it's negative square root of X, so the negative's on the outside of the square root, it's a reflection across the X axis. All right, and then the vertical stretch and compressions and the horizontal stretches and compressions, these, um, to me, are, are the hardest to remember. But you've got a vertical, remember this is your vertical axis here, okay? So you've got your parent function, f of x, and you've got a vertical stretch of a, and it takes it up here towards the y-axis. All right, if it's a vertical compression by a factor of 1 over A, which means it's between 0 and 1, then it comes down. It goes in this direction. A vertical compression kind of like presses it in towards the X but away from the Y. So this is a vertical stretch or compression. And then over here is a horizontal. So here's the horizontal. Okay, horizontal line is your x-axis. Again, you've got the parent function, and these are kind of reversed. You can see up here the vertical stretch, and over here it's a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over b. So this is now the fraction. It pushes it up, okay? So it's a horizontal compression. In my mind, compression, I would think it'd get closer, but it doesn't. It gets away from the x-axis. And then a horizontal stretch by a factor of B, a horizontal stretch. So it's stretching it, it's getting closer to X, even though that's a horizontal stretch. So these two are the hardest to remember just because of they're kind of opposites of each other, but they kind of, in my mind, seem a little opposite of what you're looking at. But let's look at some examples. For each square root function, identify the requested values of A, B, H, and K. Then describe the effect that each parameter has on the graph of the function as compared to the parent square root function. Use a graphing tool to check your responses. All right, so here G of X equals the square root of X minus five. This is outside the square root, so you can see that it's gonna be shifted down. All right, so A is 1. There's no number, so you assume it to be 1. H is the number inside. There's no number underneath the radical. And K is the number outside, so that's the negative 5. So it shifts the parent function graph down 5 units. 
All right, g of x, this time the number is underneath here, so that's going to be your h. There's still no number for a, so we're going to assume that's a 1. h is 3, not negative 3. Remember, negative is part of um, the equation. So x minus is part of the equation. So we're just looking for h, which is the 3. And then k, there's no number outside here, so that would be a 0. And this shifts the parent function graph. Let's see, so it's negative, so it's going to shift it to the right, three units. And you can see that it always shifts it opposite of what you think, so negative shifts it to the right here. All right, so then it has g of x equals 3 times square root of x, so this time a is 3, h is 0, k is 0, and there is a vertical. Okay, so this number is larger than 1, so it's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of a. And a in this case is 3. So a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, which is your a here. All right, so it says g of x equals the square root of negative 4x. All right, so b is negative 2. Don't know where that came from. b equals negative 1 fourth. Okay, that's true because the number here on the inside of the radical, you can see that is 1 over b. So 1 over b. And then there's no h or k. So this one is 1. This one is a horizontal compression. So this one is a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over b. So it's going to be a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 fourth because that's the b. And then it's a reflection over the x or the y-axis. Horizontal compression by a factor. And then it is Inside is negative, so it's a reflection across the y-axis. So because the negative is underneath the radical, it's a reflection across the y. All right, now it says g of x equals one square root of 1 fourth x. So this time b is 4, because remember it's 1 over b. h is 0, k is 0. There is a blank stretch of the parent function graph by a factor of... Um, 4, but this is underneath the radical, so let me double check. Underneath the radical, so it's a horizontal pretty sure it's horizontal. Yes, because it's underneath the radical. So it is a horizontal horizontal stretch as a parent function. I guess I spelled that right. Looks like I did not. Let's see, maybe that is vertical. Let's check. So let's see, 4, 0, 0, vertical stretch by a factor of 4. Nope, it's horizontal. I just didn't spell something correctly. All right, 4, 0, 0. One-fourth horizontal compression by a factor of one-fourth. All 
All right, that should be horizontal. I'm not sure why it's counting it wrong. All right, if you have any questions,